Hey guys, it's your favorite gold miner, prospector, and geologist, Jeff Williams. And today we're gonna go over some of the most asked questions about our underground placer gold mine, or the infamous drift mine, as it's more commonly known. So let's get into it. The biggest question we get is, Jeff, what made you decide to dig in the spot that you're digging now? First thing we did was we prospected and sampled for two years before we even decided to sink a shaft. It looks something like this. Jeff Williams here with AskJeffWilliams.com. Believe it or not, digging for gold. You got this really nice red clay material here. A lot of iron oxide in it, magnetite, hematite. Check the washes first for black sand. That's all magnetite and hematite. Basically, it's decomposing iron. If you got this in a wash, it's a good chance there could be gold. It doesn't mean there is gold. Chances are better when you see this. Just depending on where you're at, you want to get down to that bedrock. Fortunately, here in Arizona, there is no bedrock. It's only a caliche period. It's all cemented, like a cemented gravel. Gold is resting on top of that. Most of this stuff came from the Precambrian time period. Uh, there's a lot of schist in the area, decomposing schist. So it's not too bad. We got some nice pieces of gold, a lot of flakes. There's a lot of nice little pickers in there. See that? In those two years of sampling, we found multiple Chinese shafts in the area, or coyote holes as they're known. We went ahead and we explored them and sampled them. And that looks like this. Look how loose that is. See that snake skin in there? That means there's a rattlesnake around here somewhere. I'm not liking that too much. Oh yeah, look at that little snake right there. See him? I don't know if you can see that snake. What are you doing in there, Sonny Jim? <laughs> it looks like you're in one of those old Chinese tunnels. Uh, we're trying to find big gold underneath big rocks. Yeah. Oh, it's nice in here. And it keeps, look at that. Oh man, it goes way back in that other cavity. Sure gosh. And that dirt gets nice and red. You see that? Yeah, that's the next bucket. Gravel look good, Kimo Sobe. Let me think I'm digging here. Based off the information that we found down in those coyote holes, we were confident that we could drop our own shaft and hit the same exact layer. And that's exactly what we did. It looks something like this. Well, I'm gonna map out my shaft right here. And I'm gonna auger down as far as I can, then I'll dig it by hand after that. Of course, the biggest problem I'm gonna have here is what? Big old rocks. <laughs> and in this world, there's two kinds of people. Those with loaded guns and those who dig. Today, I dig. Sixteen men on a dead man's chest. I want to show you something because I had a few people ask me this question. See these large rocks down here? I had a few guys ask me, what happens if I'm doing some drift mining in alluvial gravel and I run into one of these guys that's too big? You're going to get yourself a sea air blaster. I'll leave a link down below. be our end bearing plate right here. Everything here is going to be sitting on top of that. And then eventually when you go down another hundred feet, you put another one in. All right, let me hear it. Look at that. I got room for my lagging back there. See my lagging strip? All right, last one. All I gotta do now is run a nail or two in here if I want to. I'm sure once I backfill all of this, it ain't going nowhere. We got a lagging backfill, see that? Isn't that nice? And we're down, what, maybe about uh, four and a half feet down. We've done countless videos on how to timber a shaft and a drift properly, the way it should be done. In fact, we have a lot of people around the world who have done just that, and by following our instructions, they found gold. Już nawet mamy jego kształt zamierzony. Witek pogłębia. Poszukiwacz Witek. Kopie za trzech, ciąga w wiadro na systemie bloczków do samej góry. Nie tak.
Now our first shaft was 20 feet deep. That's where the pay layers were that were sitting on top of caliche beds. Now keep in mind, these are not cemented caliche beds. Those come later. And we found out the hard way just how difficult it is to cut through fine grain cemented caliche. Oh yeah. Yeah, fracture that rock up real good. Now I'd say about two years into the process of digging this drift mine, we realized that we weren't on top of the best pay layers. In fact, we'll find out later on, that's another 20 feet down. So we started dropping incline shafts. In fact, one of them required us to manufacture a slusher because it was getting tight. That looks like this. <laughs> My job's so much easier. Woo, yeah, look at that. Our homemade slusher that we installed. You can see the gates on the bottom where it opens and closes. This would be called a transfer point. You're transferring it from one section to another. And then from here, it would take it up to a second transfer point. Here's the bottom of the incline shaft. And this all had to be drilled and blasted. After we drilled, blasted, and mucked everything out, we opened up this cave system. I've done many videos on this cave system and there's actually quite a few of them down here. But they're really tiny and they're very hard to squeeze into for anybody. We put cameras down there on poles. We put remote control cars in. It keeps going and you can hear water. If you put your head in there, you can hear water and we were also finding fossils down here and I noticed that the sands that were coming out of this were real fine red clay and they had small gold inside of it all these drainage systems connect to the infamous river of gold cocoa weave heading east on Bailey Road drivers will pass by the blue and white beacons signaling the way to cocoa weave located about three miles down a series of dirt roads it is here where the larger than life legend continues to play out captivating treasure hunters hungry investors and curious thrill seekers as mentioned earlier extensive case systems do exist throughout the Mojave Desert. Mitchell Caverns features a trio of immense limestone caves with spectacular teen draperies, stalactites, stalagmites, and other wondrous subterranean mineral formations. Cocoa Weave Peak, in its own right, has three considerable near-vertical caverns named Cocoa Weave, Crystal, and King Sabi. He's supposed to have concealed the entrance, you know, to, to prevent anybody else from having it. If he couldn't have it, nobody else could have it, as far as what his relatives tell us. He decided to return to the cave and set off two explosions to seal the natural entrance. Stories vary as to whether or not the other two prospectors were in the cave at the time. Basically, we get going about seven o'clock in the morning and uh, spend our whole day drilling for as much as 10 hours if we have bad ground. We'll drill 27 to 32 holes, depending on the type of ground, whether it's soft or hard rock. And right now we're drilling about seven feet and pulling all that rock, um, so seven foot, a day because we'd like to be down underneath Cocoa Weave Cave, uh, you know, by August or so. If Dora's affidavit is correct, if there is a large cavern system inside Cocoa Weave with the use of infrared imaging equipment, it could possibly be spotted. After we drill the holes, we'll uh, stuff our primers in the back, that is the, the dynamite with the fuse and whatnot. It's uh, ammonium nitrate. It's kind of like fertilizer. It smells nasty. It's why, part of why we use the respirators. Keep it out of our lungs. And um, we'll set them off usually with safety fuse, but uh, sometimes we'll use electric detonation. We did today, for instance. It's a little easier to control the time of, of electric detonation. After we blast it out, we'll spend the next day just mucking it out. Muck is uh, ore that's uh, not valuable. <laughs> rocks should throw away. So we'll muck the, the rocks out with that slusher bucket. And uh, you know, as soon as the tunnel's clean, we'll, we'll set it up to drill again. There's a, an element Cocoa of- Cocoa Weave Peak there. lies right off Bailey Road, exit off Basically, Interstate 15. I there, that the caverns exist and then it's the eighth wonder of the world. You notice as we dug this out, we found round river rock everywhere and you can hear water. If you're real quiet, you can hear it rolling in the background. 
I don't know if you can hear that. You can see how it's all water-worn and smooth, and there are root systems everywhere down here. And these weird-looking fossils, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> it almost looks like a taquito. Do you see that? And I'm going to show you what that back looks like so you can see. Look how smooth that is. You see what I'm talking about? See, there's pieces of sandstone that are part of the caliche, and look how smooth it is where the water has been slowly eating away at it. That is amazing. You can see the root systems down in there. And it just keeps going on and on and on. And there's that red, red dirt I was telling you about right there. But it is tight. Now we knew that there were plenty of Chinese shafts in the area. So it was just a matter of time before we tapped into one. But we didn't think we would tap into it this fast. Is I'm gonna leave the camera down here. I'm gonna go up on the surface. I'm gonna show you what we found up there. Bushes out here. Oh, it's falling through! And we made an incline out of it because we knew that the better gold was down deeper. Look at that. And in fact, some of the biggest nuggets we've ever found have come from that particular level on top of the cemented cleachy beds. It's phenomenal gold, gold like we've never seen before. Some of them three ounce nuggets. Isn't that the nicest piece of gold you ever saw? Look at that, not bad for one day, yeah. Uh. That's what it's all about right there. We realized that we needed to build an ore cart with track and a skip bucket. There it is, piece by piece. Not only dumps, but it also rotates just like a regular ore cart. And it's got the latch on it too. I can twist it from side to side and it's so balanced. It just one handed I can do this. And there's a little dowel right there that goes up into this hole. So when you close it, it locks into position. You see that? Just like a regular ore cart. Skip buckets require a sump to dump into, and that's where we got a big surprise. We decided to find out what was underneath the caliche bed. It's about five feet thick. That's what it looks like, hard as a rock. No, no, yeah, but we needed a place for our shaft sinking bucket to go, a sump, if you will. So we have somewhere to dump all of our muck or all of our ore. The problem we encountered with drilling this caliche bed is that there are seams of red clay that are anywhere from four feet down to two and a half feet down, very inconsistent, making drilling really difficult. We sampled this and found small bits of gold in it, and we think that it connects with underground aquifers that feed to cocoa weed. We got 20 holes drilled. We got 16 for our shaft sinking bucket and four for the man way. Now that's a mess. See where we've chipped some out in the corners here, and we removed from here over to here this much, and it's still cracking a little bit. In mining, it's always so much easier to use gravity. So you always have your skip sit lower than your ore cars or whatever it is you're using to haul your material out of your haulage drift so you can dump down. That way we can just wheel our ore car over and dump directly into it. It'll sit all the way at the bottom. Well, the problem with that is when we were digging down, Sutton decided to come up and say hello. Now we did as much research as we could on what it could be. We still don't know. The closest thing we found was there's old research papers that indicate that during the time that there was an inland sea here, there was definitely some kind of large worm creature that was living down on the ocean floor, the seabed. Now, if you would have told me five years ago that there are prehistoric creatures living 40 to 50 feet underground below cemented caliche beds, I would have said, you're crazy. But after coming in contact with them, I can tell you right now, 
There are more things in the earth that we don't know about than we're being told. We've made many, many videos on what we think that worm is, and we've had a lot of suggestions. Now, I'm sure there's millions of them down there, and the question is, is what's down below it? Because it's really soft, and there's water that comes up like a natural aquifer when we go through the monsoon seasons. So I'm not sure what's down there, but the gold, and lots of it, is down there. There's the apron that we dump all of our material into. Ours is two up, three down, one emergency stop. And like I said, that's about 320 pounds. We run the first six to eight inches that's sitting on top of these cemented caliche beds through a wash plant. I wish that somebody would help me. Ah! And yeah, you're gonna get wet. Oh, 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 yeah. And that is what I'm talking about. You see oh, what I mean? Yeah. That is absolutely amazing. Now in the seven and a half years that we've been mining this drift mine, we've pulled out not ounces, but pounds of gold. And all the gold that we pull out of there goes directly to our premium patrons. Because without their support, we would have never gotten as far as we did. So in return, they get every speck of gold that comes out of that mine. And of course we have hard rock mines too. In fact, you've probably seen Jason from Mount Baker Mining and Metals in one of our better mines where he actually got a bad case of gold fever. Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. And this is the mine shaft cannonball, yay! Yeah. What you got? Yeah, I've been oh, working, you got a rich pocket. I've been working this little pocket here. Right. And it's gold I have never seen before. You get, you'd get a little vug open up and you break it off and it's just quartz crystals and it's gold sticking out all the quartz crystals. We're currently in the process of getting these mines safe enough so we can get our patrons down there so that they can have the experience of what it's like to get the gold out for themselves. And of course, all the gold they can mine out, they get to keep. Man, this thing's stable as all heck. You like it? Dude. Would you buy it for a dollar? Uh. Dude, I bet you this was like 100 bucks. The yeah. top part just needs an anchor on it and you're good. Ding, ding. And if that weren't enough, our premium patrons get to come out on our three day gold mining tours where they get to metal detect or dry wash and keep all the gold they find. We also give away brand new Mine Lab Gold Monster 1000 metal detectors every month. Now, if you want to get involved with any of this, all you got to do is look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks something like that. Click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you're in like Flint. And if you want to see more videos on drift mining, just watch this video right here, and I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.